Welcome to Agri Today. I am Khadija Oluwatoyin. I mean, this edition takes us to Makudi, the Benue State capital, where farmers from where East and West local governments are trained on cowpea cultivation. In our series of empowerment and training programs across all areas of agriculture, aimed at strengthening farm practices, the Agriculture Research Council of Nigeria, ARC, in collaboration with Samek Nigerian Limited, organized a two-day training program on cowpea cultivation. This empowerment program is sponsored by the House of Representatives Lomika from Gwe East and Gwe West Territorial Districts of Benue State, Representative Mark Bila. At this empowerment program, the lawmaker is represented by Kev Vitali. Sitting in this hall are farmers yearning to earn as a resource persons train them on copy popularly known as beans farming. The sponsor of the training, Mark Bila, appealed to the participants to use the opportunity well by learning the techniques and take home the lessons to other farmers in their various localities. Yeah. On behalf of my principal, your representative, your senator to be, Right Honorable Mark Tesegula, to, to welcome you all to this very important uh, training. You see, the only thing that makes a nation or an individual to grow is constant training of new ideas, new inputs, new technology in whatever that you do. And the Honorable has thought it wise to put this training together for farmers. If it were possible to invite the entire farmers of Zombie to this place, we would have done that. But resources, time, and space would not permit us. So most of you here have been carefully selected from your wards, from your communities, to come here and gain knowledge. This knowledge is not supposed to be yours alone. The intention is that as you go back, you should be able to call your brother, to call your sister, who are also farmers, and tell them, I've learned something new today. Do you understand? Yes. Sometimes we do certain things and we don't get results, and we begin to ask. I've been doing this over the years, and there is no result. This person just started yesterday, and is making it. Why is it so? Some of you begin to ascribe your failures to certain uh, factors that are not tenable. It is because others are using modern techniques, modern inputs, and high-breed seedlings to farm. Isn't it? Your, uh, what do you call it? Your herbicides that you use. If you don't know how to apply herbicides to your uh, farm, you will just destroy your entire crops rather than the weeds. So I want to believe that this training will expose us, We give you an exposition, We give all of us an exposition to the modern ways of farming. And we are praying that at the end of the day, all of us will go home with something tangible. There will be a difference in our ways of farming. And uh, we also want to appeal to you that take this training very, very serious. It will amount to nothing if at the end of the day, you come here and you go home with nothing. So... We are praying and believing that this training will change a lot of things in the agricultural sector of Zombi, Benue State, and Nigeria at large. I welcome you and uh, the Honorable would have been here personally. But you know, you have sent him to be your representative in Abuja and uh, the business of lawmaking requires that you are always there. That is why he's not here. I want to apologize on his behalf. It's not intentional. It's not deliberate. It's not as if he doesn't take you people very serious. 
we take you people and hold you in high esteem. We pray that God will give you the memory, open your hearts, so that whatever is being taught here will be assimilated and put to practice for the good of humanity. Representative of Samek Nigerian Limited, Mr. Shei Stephen Addition, called on participants to pay attention to the lecture for the betterment of their constituents. Please, Samek has been in two different trainees. Um, we're known for training farmers on agricultural technologies, and I believe that your coming here today will be of more beneficiary to you and to your community. Please, once again, pay every single attention to everyone who is coming here to train you because to be a more beneficiary to you. Thank you. The resource person from ARCN, Dr. Musa Musa, explained to the participants the improved methods of cowpea cultivation and taught them all techniques and agronomics practices. In Nigeria. So we want to see that in the next statistic we'll be getting the new state will join this state by the grace of God. And the credit will go to our honorable for a diminute feat to organize this training for us to be enlightened on how to go about cowpea production in his federal constituency. Recognizing that this is a cash crop that can actually add to the GDP of this country, add to whatever contribution in the state and his federal constituency. We are continuing on the overview. The figure one we have here, we look at the trend in the yield of cowpea in the last five years. That's between 2017 and 2021. And this data we use, we got it from NAERLS in Zaria. The Nigeria Cultural Extension and Research Liaison Center in Zaria. They carry out, they are responsible for carrying out agricultural survey to find out how Nigeria is doing and also they have a mandate in training also. So they produce these reports every year to see in crop commodities, how is this state doing? Which state is better? Which state is doing bad? And what are those factors? How much interest does we have, uh, do people have in uh, this commodity in this area? They do a comparative analysis to present their report every year. So this report is for Benue State. So in the last five years, the trend shows that the cowpea production in Benue State is in an is increasing trend of yield. That means from 2017 to 2021, Benue State is actually uh, having an increased yield. But there was a stagnation between 2017 and 2018 because the figures are the same. The product, the yield in 2017 and 18 were uh, were the same. So it shoots in 2018, uh, 2019, and in 2021 it moves higher. Meaning what? We are actually moving forward as far as uh, cowpea production is concerned in Benue State. Important of cowpea. Why are we talking about cowpea? Why should we even want to grow cowpea? Why? What are those reasons that we are focusing our energy and we are spending our money, we are sitting here to say we want to learn about cowpea and how to improve on our cowpea production? It is an Profitable cash crop. We have established that before. It is profitable. You want money. If you want cash, you can go into cowpea production. It's something that you grow within two, three months, some varieties, and you are done with it. You have to stop. Some we after harvesting we wait for some period, take it to the market and get big money. So it is profitable. So your coming here is not a waste. You are coming to learn something that is profit it will be profitable to you. It is nutritious food crop. It is a nutritious food crop. Of course, we have established all these things. We just want to itemize so that you know why it is important. Early in the season, the green pod represents an important food source. Of course, we have said that in some area, the leaves are actually used as vegetable, depending on the culture and your belief. Cowpea leaves provide fodder for animal feed, food source for animal feed. We have said that before. Cowpea plant provide nitrogen fixation to improve soil quality talked about nitrogen, that it fixes its own nitrogen uh, in the natural process through the nitrogen cycle. Cowpea plants grow quickly, provide ground cover, suppressing weed growth, 
preserving moisture and enriching plant residue is a cover crop. And from our basic agreement, we know what cover crops are. There are actually some of those adaptations to climate change uh, uh, issues. So when you have cover crop, they tend to actually increase uh, the productivity of the soil. Cowpea plant deep root system help to stabilize the soil region, plow in desertification. So this what is is uh, actually a bit up to what we've been saying. So it is a uh, dry, it's cultivated in dry area, so it's adaptable to what a desert environment. We have table one here. And our table one is actually uh, showcasing the quiz we started with, asking where to get variety. This is presented in table one. So there, there is a table that is showing you where to get a variety in the manual. So what we have here, criteria for selecting cowpea variety for the, a particular environment, production constraint. What are those production constraints? that will make you look for a variety. <coughs> variety to use. What are those varieties that you use when you have this constraint? Where to purchase the seed? The table are in three different colors. So we say drought. If your production constraint is drought, there is no rain. You know what, we know what drought is? Yes. Yeah, a period where there is uh, no, no, no rainfall. Rain yes, in the desert environment. So if it is drought, there are drought tolerance and they are early maturing. Does not mean that where there is drought, there is no rain at all. It's just that the rain is too minimal to support agricultural production. And we know there is difference between drought and dry spell. There is a dry spell that is also a period of no rainfall, but that is a short period. But drought is a prolonged period. That is different between a drought and a dry spell. So drought tolerance and early maturing is what you use when you have this constraint. And we say, where do you purchase your seed? Buy seed from recognized seed company. There are recognized seed company that are registered. You can look for them. The internet is a teacher for everybody. When you Google, you'll be able to see. Even in Benue, there might be some of those locations that are recognized uh, 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 seed companies. Recognized agro dealers shops. These are recognized, registered agro dealers that get their varieties from product of research. Agricultural research institutions, we know them across. The University of Agriculture, Makori, their products are actually product of research, but there are research institutions that actually have the mandate in copy production, and one of them is IR Zaria. International level, the IITA is also actually leading in that regard. Agricultural development program, the ADP, madam, the ADPs are also source that you can try if the ministry is not giving you. We know the ADP is under the ministry, but you try the ADP. The ADP are more of extension people, so they can be able to advise you if they, if they are not available within your region. So if you channel your complaint very well, uh, the ADP should be able to assist you in that regard. A ADP, Agricultural Development Programs. Yes, the ADP, they are in every state in Nigeria. It's a project that, the federal government project, and they are still sustained. They are subsumed under the Federal Ministry of Agriculture, the State Ministry of Agriculture. There are ADP offices. When you go to Benue ADP, I used to have the contact of uh, uh, the executive, the, the director of Benue State ADP, because I did a research that I had to collect data from ADPs. So I know it exists in Benue State. Varieties that have some resistance to major pests and diseases are actually recommended to be you. So if you have this production constraint, you look for varieties. When you go to the seed company, you say, this is my challenge. Knowing my environment very well, I have done this, done that, and this is what I feel is a challenge. So you get the varieties that are actually resistant to this and are hybrid. The issue of hybrid is that it can produce maximum yield and also get resistant to any infestation. So that is uh, the importance of uh, hybrid seeds. So we can see seeds. Figo 3A is a good seed, good cowpea seed for planting. By main seeing it, you know that yes, these seeds cannot be compared. And Figo 3B is actually a bad cowpea seed. It's a bad cowpea seed for planting. Of course, seeds that are wrinkled, 
seeds that are broken, seeds that are, are, are unkept, have been infected, are not actually good for planting, but rather a good seed that is well prepared for planting. That is what you get from this uh, recognized uh, institutions that we have mentioned because they are out for market. They are seed companies, so they are out for market. If they don't give you good product, you will not return the idea. So you actually need to go there to get seed. So we say select good seed without damage hole or wrinkle for planting. Well stored seed under optimum condition will have good germination. And choice of variety. If you want to select variety, now we've been explaining all this all along. So the choice of variety is based on the following. Now, maturity period. Will you buy a variety that will mature even long after the rainfall while you don't have moisture to support the growth? So you look at the maturity period. If the maturity period is actually very long, it is actually not recommended for that. But knowing fully your rainfall pattern, we'll get to that. We'll see if your rainfall starts from so-so-so months and ends in so-so months, what time do you plant? There are recommendations. Knowing fully your, your, your uh, environment. If the rainfall pattern starts from there, and we'll explain further when we get there. Maturity period is very important. You don't get a seed that will, will get longer before maturity. Yield potential. You plant per hectare, you get maximum yield. So that is why the hybrid is recommended. Drought tolerance. So because they are planted most often in the dry area. So you get those that can withstand drought. Even if there are prolonged period of absence of rainfall, they can withstand. Responsiveness to day length. Of course, some of these varieties are photosensitive. So yeah, they are, that's why they are not recommended for planting in the early part of uh, uh, onset of rainfall. So they, are, they get to be planted at the late, at the middle, or certain recommended period, so that the day length effect does not actually uh, catch up with them. Parasitic weed infestation, of course, weed is also a problem in uh, uh, cowpea production. Pests and disease resistance, we have said that before, that you get varieties that are resistance to certain pests and disease that are peculiar in your environment. Site selection. How do you select your site? Where to grow cowpea? Site selection. Is it grown anywhere? Is it done anyhow? We'll get to see. Proper site selection is very important. Select a well-drained sanding loam soil for rain-fed cowpea. Of course, we know we have different type of cultivation of a regime. We have the rain -fed, we have the irrigation, we have the flood plain cultivation. In Benue here, I know flood is the issue. Areas along the River Ninja, River Benue are actually having issues of flooding owing to the release of water from down. So some of your location might be actually prone to flooding, but there are practices you can do. There's a floodplain cultivation using the residual moisture. When the, rain, when the flood water is recedes, there are, these are times you can cultivate. And because this has a very short gestation period, it has a short period, it can actually do well if good practices and good seed are actually used. So we say select a well-drained sandy loam soil for rainfall cowpea, an inland depression or along the shore of the lake for dry season crop using residual moisture. So dry season cultivation is encouraged. But when you are doing dry season cultivation, you have to be uh, uh, concerned about the timing. You don't allow when the rain, the rain uh, actually has stopped for a long period before you start uh, cultivation. You must also have alternative way of storage of water. You must use uh, supplemental irrigation if you have water along that area. So that when it is a deficit in rainfall a month, that can actually complement when you have uh, uh, that practice. Cowpea does not tolerate excessive wet condition or water logging and should not be grown on poorly drained soil. Because we say it does not tolerate water logging, does not mean you should go to any soil and cultivate it. It's actually uh, very also selective. Land preparation. Clear the site first. How to prepare the land. You first and foremost clear the land. Clear the side of shrub and stubbles, meaning unwanted uh, uh, grasses within that area. Alternatively, spray the field with glyphosate. Glyphosate is actually a, a herbicide that you use in the, 
are spraying the feed that is prior to preparation. R Roundup at a rate of four liter per hectare, about two third of peak liquid milk tin. We're just giving you some of this alternative. If you don't know what uh, uh, four liter is, you can, if you have four liter of that, you can use about two, uh, two third of peak liquid tin milk. Or we say 500 and, uh, 157 ml of chemical in a 15 liter sprayer. These are just specification how, you, how to use it. So if you have an area, you want to actually use glyphosate at the rate of four liter per hectare, so you use about two third of a peak liquid tin mix or the other uh, recommendation that are given. So if you are actually using three, uh, 15 liter sprayer or a three mix tin of chemicals in a 20 liter snapshot sprayer, we're just giving you some of those specifications that you use and, uh, for the spraying. Leave the field for at least 10 days for a merge weed to be killed. So after spraying, you don't go immediately to cultivate because the, that, the reaction is actually taking place at that time. So at, 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 at most two weeks or at least 10 days is actually recommended to allow the farm to actually go through this process. Sowing and spacing, how to sow, how to plant, and the spacing. You don't just plant. You know cowpea has a way of spreading. There are varieties that spread. So if you plant them too closely, then you actually fall into the problem of spacing. So there are recommendations for planting each variety of cowpea. So erect varieties should be planted at a close spacing of 50 centimeter between row. If we say row, this is, these are actually rows. Row, no, rows, rows, these are columns. So between the rows, we say 50 centimeter between row and 20 centimeter between plants, between plants. Between row is like this. 50 centimeter, then between plant is 20 centimeter. I hope we are getting it. Yes. The roll is this. The roll is this. The column is this. Yes. So you give that. For semi erect variety, spacing should be 75 centimeter between row and uh, 25 to 30 centimeter between plant. Because the erect variety actually stands erect. It stands erect at the, uh, 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 when you are cultivating. Then semi-erect, that means it stands and it actually oh. have a way of spreading. So the one that stands will be cultivated very, a bit closer than the one that actually spread. So that is what we are saying here. The specification are uh, there for your consumption. So uh, figure 4A to D, we have tried to bring some of those varieties and to show you how they, are, they, they, they perform on the feed. So A is erect and spreading. It goes erect and at the point it spread. And B is late spreading, meaning it spread late. It does not spread as early as the erect and spreading. It's late spreading. That is figure B. Then C is spreading and semi-erect. It is spreading and it also looks like it is erect, but it's actually spreading. Then D is semi-spreading. We have other, other varieties that are not captured here. There is the postrate, there are other products that are not uh, actually captured here. Smart agronomic practice in cowpea production continue. To better assess the understanding of participant, resource person Dr. Musa, however, gave the class some exercise on the problems farmers encounter in cowpea production in Benue State and possible solutions. <laughs> I am uh, Honorable Iboa James from Gwa West. 
uh, I want to maintain the existing protocol. Uh, this, uh, our, our presentation here we may look similar to that of one, but uh, we, we must say something. Our, one of our challenges here uh, is that insect pests are the major challenge in our community. For example, we have this uh, weevil and termite. Because whenever we, like in my own place, it's a very, it's a very high uh, place that we don't have enough water, but whenever you farm this, I don't know whether it's because of the ignorance, uh, the termite and the, those, this is a core weevil, it destroys everything, we end up not having anything at the end of the day. Then, we still have uh, uh, this one, uh, we have been mentioning it every day, uh, flooding and excess water, especially during plantings. Most of our people uh, find it difficult to uh, farm cowpea. It's our major challenges in, um, in our place. And our people, my group, uh, they also uh, point out that lack of awareness to prefer uh, the right varieties. Because our people at times, just like uh, our master, Musa was saying yesterday, uh, we, we, we really want to farm it, but we plant the varieties that are not suitable. I don't even know the exactly uh, varieties that we supposed to use. So that really helps us because some of us we farm it and end up not getting anything at the end of the season. Then the major one that is affecting each and every one of us because no we most of we farmers we farm to eat alone because we don't have enough capital. So we are we lack capital enough. Uh, lack of capital. Uh, if we go to our villages, we normally find it difficult to have capital that we can buy those uh, herbicides. Just like I can see uh, some of the equipment here, and even the inputs, we don't have them, or how we we'll we we'll can be able to follow up. Like yesterday, like some of us, uh, it's even my first time to hear that even those. T uh, Things like KOP and others that will put fertilizer. We we just believe that if we have our fertilizer, we'll go on to put in we'll put for either guinea corn, our yam and the rest. Those one don't even mind putting uh, fertilizer. So uh, we like capital too. So if we come to our prospect, uh, just uh, like as I was saying, it it may look uh, similar to what the say too but uh, I still I will still say something because like uh, uh, I wanna like government like if, if you come to our various places we find it difficult to to, to assess the, the money that will be able to get the required input so uh, we always find it difficult so uh, if I will keep on saying a lot of things, it may look like reputation, but these are just the few things uh, we have from our uh, particular group. Thank you very much. I want to say that I'm not disappointed at group uh, two at all. I have said it before the beginning that I'm sure group two will do better, and they have actually done better. Please, let's put our hands together for this. I am Peter Anker by name. I represent group three. Yesterday we sat, brainstormed, and we also brought out some uh, problems or challenges which face farmers in producing our cowpea. The first one we identified is illiteracy on the part of farmers. Most farmers don't know how to use the chemicals when they acquire in the market. Yes. When you get a liter of uh, glyphosate, or generally as we call it, how do you apply it? Most of us will measure a little, hoping it will work for them, and the reverse becomes the case. 
So it's a major problem. We also look at our capital, which most have identified here, which I won't dwell on it. We also looked at pests and our diseases. I want to inform the house that I have been to this business of, of our cowpea for more than five years. I faced problems of our pests and our diseases. Doc, the other one, I don't know how to describe it. When I plant my cowpeas, I will notice our ants following on top. The next few days, they will lay eggs. And what happens? After some days, the copy will just uh, turn upside down. We get stunted growth. You begin to apply chemicals. You apply this one, it will not work. You apply this one, it will not work. Before you know, that will be late. So it is a problem, too, which we farmers face, especially myself. And again, we also identified storage problem which face farmers. I have a friend that is also into cowpea production. He planted cowpea, harvested more than one bag, stored it in his own way. Few weeks after, on opening the container where he stored the cowpeas, he saw nothing, just dust. So this one too, you will have to help us on the best way to preserve or store our cowpea when harvested. We equally looked at uh, a problem of mechanized way of our uh, farming. Most farmers rely on the archaic or outdated ways of farming cowpea. So it is a problem too. And then we also have the, we equally have some uh, uh, prospects that government should educate farmers on the best farming practices. In the days back, when I was young, we used to have this uh, ADC uh, staff that would visit, would visit uh, my father. And then the community would gather, they would educate them on how to farm rice or beans and all the rest. Nowadays, we no more have them. They should be there for us. We have graduates who are educated in those various fields. Don't we have them? We have them, but then they are not employed. Please, government should wake up. Employ those who are required to fill this job vacancy so that we educate the farmers to do the needful. We equally looked at uh, this issue to which other groups have uh, or hammered on, the issue of uh, soft loans. That one, I will not do it again. And then we also saw another prospect that we have firms that produce agrochemicals. They should give us consistent and better chemicals. This year, we have a problem. Most chemicals we bought did not work. Am I lying? No. Most chemicals we bought did not work. They failed us woefully. Some bought cartons, and what happened? You spray them. After some time, you go there, the grass will still remain green and fresh to not turn. So it is a problem which Government should help us to listen to the companies that we should checkmate them. Let them give us the best chemicals. It's a problem. And they will also identify another prospect that uh, government should equally give us improved seedlings so that as we work on them, we will have better years. I want to thank you very much for this uh, gathering. I pray that uh, as we go home, we shall step down the training to our fellow ones so that uh, they already. Benue will be ranked high in cowpea production. Thank you very much. I am Enoch Tekula Haje from Boko local government. My, it's a question I want to ask. You know, there was a saying in our, let me say it's like a, our forefathers, that this cowpea must be dried outside until it rains fall on it before consumption. There was a saying like that. Yes. But I don't know. Is there any, any poisonous substance inside cow pee that the rain must fall on top of it before consumption? That is my question. Graham, and I have participated and I have seen that uh, a lot of money has been sunk into it. To keep it moving, I am suggesting to the organizers and the honorable Bill that uh, 
those of us who want to continue in this uh, cow pea production should be f monitored up, should be followed, should be a continuous process. Some may fall on the wayside, but those who want to continue, you should continue to monitor them, even take time to see their farms, so that this uh, starting point should not go in vain, so that eventually Benue State will stand the same power with those far seats in the north that are producing this uh, cow pea in large quantity. Thank you. Uh, I, want, I don't know whether when you are lecturing us here, you talk about uh, dry season farming of this cow pea. I don't know whether they have taught it or not. But I want to ask if we can do that dry season uh, farming of cow peas. That is my question. I'm Patricia Bagba. Um, we talked about variety of cow pea and the planting. So I have a piece of land. How do I know which variety will be suitable for that piece of land that I have? When I go to purchase, I mean, how do I even say, how do I describe my own piece of land to the agent so that I get the appropriate variety for the kind of land that I have? Cowpea is actually tolerance to a uh, certain level of uh, soil condition. And we said that the nitrogen is not a very big issue, but it is recommended that it is applied in certain ratio, not too much, and that it is used during land preparation and during a, a planting or before planting. So knowing fully well that your land is fertile enough, your land is cultivable, can be used to cultivate cowpea. Be rest assured, if you don't have other challenges of pests and this and that, you should be able to grow your cowpea in that particular land. But no, if you have information that you have certain challenge, then what you need to do is to look for a variety that can resist that challenge. That is one of those uh, adaptation strategy that you do. Those variety, uh, uh, for example, if your soil is actually not fertile enough for production, you have tested it and it didn't work. So the next thing that we sub, uh, suggested yesterday was to do a rotation, crop rotation. You understand? We talk about crop rotation. But now we want to assume that you want to start. You want to start with a, uh, a cowpea production. And your area, you don't have problem of uh, flooding. You don't have major issues that will limit your productivity. There are 37 of these varieties that are available in this country. And I may share with you. I want to believe that the organizers have your contacts that we can share. Or when I share to them, they will have a way to link you with it. You will see the variety, the institution that develop it, the resistance. It can grow in this condition and it will do better in this agroecological zone. You know your agroecological zone. You are in the Guinea savanna region. So you pick those ones that are adaptable to that, that environment. The document is a bulky document. I extracted that of cowpea because it's for all crops. So I extracted that of cowpea. But because we want to showcase PowerPoint, it might be too lengthy to, to display. So I, I have it that I'm going to share. I'm going to share that full document. So you see your agroecological zone. You see the variety that is suitable for you. So that is it. Uh, as, uh, uh, yesterday you told us that uh, uh, if, uh, if you want to okay, if you want to apply a fertilizer, uh, you will start you, you might rather apply the fertilizer during land preparation or uh, just immediately after planting. So uh, and also, if you want to uh, oh, 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 spread the, is some of the herbicide for the insect not to disturb the flowers, you, are, you, you spray it just uh, 10 days, and after that 10 days, depending on how the insect will be uh, disturbing. So I want to ask, like in our local beans, at times when you want to, by the time you must have spray all those things, but before you, you harvest it, 
you uh, by the time you pee, you discover that some some of them have got affected inside. So uh, by the time you take it home, I still have to treat it. So do we have? I want to ask: Do we have a way that we can uh, apply a, a, a certain herbicide that? Uh, by the time it, it, it must have, have produced the seed that any insect will not come around. Because some people, because sometimes, uh, because uh, like during that, 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 that will of uh, applying the, the, the habits, uh, the, the, the fertilizer, you say it should be before. So I don't know whether we may apply, we may apply the chemical before it germinates and then uh, take care of that. Thank you. We have rained out yesterday and where I have keep it in my mind, the one we are doing today is like you are disturbing me a copy somewhere. <laughs> but the issue I want to discuss is I want to deliver, I want you to deliver a message to me. We are talking of honorable, honorable, honorable. Please. I want, to, I want you to deliver that message for me when you go home. Yeah. For me, I did many parties. We are not here for party but we are, we are mentioning Honorable Honorable. So I want you to deliver that message to me. I did almost all those parties. This is the last one. I'm going to do it. Please and please. And lastly, my greeting goes to our lecturer. Preparation and during planting, that is sufficient to allow your cowpea to grow to maturity before it gets attacked. So it's in, in the case of herbicide, uh, pe um, insecticide, that we're saying you can apply between four to five weeks, f first spring, we talk about first spring, second spring, third spring, and possibly even fourth spring. And we said that there are two methods. There is systematic, uh, uh, symmetric, and uh, the contact. Some of them, as the insect actually feed on the particular uh, uh, cowpea, that is when it gets affected. Some, as the insecticide get in contact, as they get in contact with it, it get affected. So there are also, I talk about Army Force uh, 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 storage, uh, this thing, um, the chemical for storage yesterday. We talk about that, and there are many of those uh, uh, storage uh, 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 ch ch chemicals that you can use for storage. But in the best way, because of the issue of residue, residue, the issue of effect of this chemical, it is actually not very advisable that you continue to store your cowpea with uh, certain, or you continue to change this uh, uh, storage uh, uh, chemicals very often, because that is leading to the rejection of our product in other countries. We may not know the effect now, but it actually have effect on us. But you can try the method of storage that will not actually, except if the ones that are feed, you know we said some are feed to store pests, you understand. So that the chemical can actually do well. But if you have harvested very successfully, the next thing becomes the storage uh, uh, techniques we said about. You can apply those and try to limit the use of chemicals as much as you can. So most of these varieties are actually resistant because we have said it. Our subject matter is hybrid. So all these conditions we are talking about has been taken care of. But in the event that we have this situation, this is what to do. That's what we recommended to Good morning, everyone, brothers and sisters. You are all welcome to this program. My expectation in this program is that we are expecting to learn more and to be more educated in farming so, so that we can go to our own community and lecture those ones that don't know anything about this modern farming. So we are, we are very grateful for the program, and may God bless the people that organize this program. Well, I want to thank the first person that addressed us. He said something that interests me very much. You see, agriculture, first of all, is the taproot of human survival. It's as if there is a tree, and there's no taproot, it will fall very soon. So at the end of this uh, lesson, I'm expecting that we shall develop serious interest in farming. Not only in cow peel, another one that we are able to do. And that is the only thing that can sustain us because we are believing that one day there must be a glut. Why a glut? And where do we fall back to? It is agriculture. 
if we have it at the back of our knowledge, this training, at the end of it, we shall develop interest so that in a couple of years to come, we shall be a good producer of not only cowpea, but every other food stuff. The essence of giving you this thing is to empower you. You have been taught how to, to grow cowpea. At least the organizers have been very um, generous enough to give you seedlings, to give you knapsack uh, sprayers. There are hand rules for your safety. A lot, a lot of you use this uh, knapsack without any protective uh, uh, measure or tool. But here they have done everything for you. You have boots, you see, at least during rainy season. You use them, you go to the farm, and they, will, they are protected. So we are appealing to you, we are begging you, that you take these things, they should reach your homes, and you should put them into use judiciously, so that by tomorrow, you can encourage your brother to go into cow pea farming by giving him also, uh, even if it's a, a model of cow pea to start his own farm, you understand? Yeah. It's better. Don't sell anything that, oh, I didn't have a transport, that is why I had to sell this. I think the organizers have also taken good care of that aspect. There is a mobilization for you, not just transportation. I know that there are other things that you need. Some of you will have to hire land to farm this. At least what you have, you can tell your brother, give me a piece of land. Let me give you small thing so that I can farm on it. You understand? So, as we go into the process, as we go into the process of uh, distributing these materials. Farm equipment, cash, and certificates were presented to the participants at startup parks. Speaking on the success of the two-day program, the organizers expressed their happiness with the conduct of participants. Okay, Samik Nigeria Company Limited, uh, um, we are into trainings, we carry out trainings for organizations, individual, corporate firms and politicians, anybody. Okay, today's training is all about uh, modern farming techniques and equipment. We bring farmers together to train them on how they could step up on their farming um, and utilize some modern equipment on the farming aspect. Um, the right honorable who represents this um, community deem it fit to empower his people, uh, um, probably knowing the challenges they face. So they did the, um, the selection with the ARCN um, 
organization. Honestly, I am so, so impressed, especially with the turn up and the participants have shown um, some level of maturity. They were not just interested in the empowerment alone. They were also interested in the training they went through. The facilitators, the resource persons, they've tried their best to make sure the training is well equipped. As a matter of fact, I, during the training I went through and I see almost all the participants were writing and they also did, um, I think, classwork and I was impressed, honestly. I was impressed. It is a huge success. We have a very wonderful training. The the facilitators, the instructors have been carefully selected. They gave wonderful lectures. As you can see, the participants too were very keen and ready to learn, just like the, the trainers too. They took them line by line, item by item, course by course, and they, had, they covered the entire course uh, uh, guide that they brought. So the, in the whole, in a nutshell, I can say that this is a wonderful training. This is one of the best trainings I've ever witnessed based on the conduct and the materials and inputs that were given. So I want to commend uh, the Agricultural Research Council of Nigeria and uh, Samic Nigeria Company Limited for putting this wonderful training together. And I want to also commend my principal in whose behalf I'm here for carefully selecting a wonderful training package because it has to do with farmers. And these farmers are not just people who are resident in the urban areas. They are from the grassroots, from the rural areas, and I want to believe that the target beneficiaries is uh, commendable. Are we expecting more of this training? Is it going to end on Kauki or you're looking after that? No, 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 no. We started last week. It's a series of training. People were trained in greenhouse operations. Today they were trained in cowpea farming, inputs and techniques. And uh, in a couple of days, we have another one that we are going to give grant and empower people in certain farming skills and uh, techniques. And we have several. And I want to say that uh, it is our belief that the Honorable, being somebody that is people-oriented, has more of these programs that are coming up, and some of them are also captured in the 2023 budget. Expectedly, participants on their part express appreciation to the organizers for the opportunity. They urge them to make this routine exercise for the betterment of the people in the senatorial zone. Ah, we are very, very grateful about the program. May God bless the, pro the, the, the man that uh, organized the program. We are very, very great. We are very happy. In my own aspect, we will go home, we will go to our community and teach the people about the modern farming so that they will learn from us. It's very educative, empowering, and I, I'm grateful to God and the organizers. And I thank them for the project. It has been very empowering, and I've learned a lot from it. I thank... I, they should continue with it, and God should bless him. Yeah, it's so impressive. I've never seen witness this kind of training before. Especially, I want to greet my senator to be, Honorable Bila, and the organizer of the training, that they should keep it up. It should not end here. It should go to other people and train them as well as they did to us. I appreciate them. Thank you. My name is Solomon. I'm from Goma local government. I want to thank the people that organized this training, that let the training not be for us alone, let the training and the program continue to another people so that our country will be developing. The agriculture too, we have a good name. I want to thank you people for the, what you people do for us today. And we receive more training more than as we learn to.
And that's where we draw the curtains on this edition of today. I hope that you've learned some techniques in the farming of cowpea. I am Khadija Oluwatoin. I mean, thank you.